And good morning, everyone. My name is Claude Diamond, and this is Role Play Wednesday. Welcome. And uh, we're going to be talking about um, uh, different aspects of the real estate market, which is changing tremendously right now, tremendously right now. Um, I've been talking a lot. I'm going to have some videos up on uh, later today on YouTube um, on the recession and how it affects real estate and how to utilize lease purchasing. Because what's the one thing we have right now that we're seeing? We're seeing inflation, uh, double digit, in my opinion, interest rates are increasing substantially. Uh, foreclosures and evictions in certain markets are increasing. Length of marketing, uh, instead of overnight getting multiple um, offers on a property, we're now seeing 30 and 45 day and longer listings in certain uh, key markets. I'm in San Diego, California. And uh, uh, one of the things I mentor people and one of the things I'm going to do today is role play with Helen and Joseph and Albert. Let's see, Albert, are you brave enough to, to good morning, sir. Albert, are you brave enough to turn on your video? No hiding in my rooms here. You got to come on. Okay, unless you have a wardrobe malfunction. Um, this is the way you learn, you participate, okay? My, Mr. Seville is in the building here too. So I wanna do a lot of role plays. I think there's three things you need to succeed in business. Good morning, Albert. Oh, look at that beautiful screen. How nice. Um, I think the things you need to succeed in business, and particularly in real estate, I'm real estate centric. I've been in real estate 32 years. I love it. Everybody needs a place to live. It's a necessity of life. And um, I'm the author of The Gut Sales Method. Uh, that's a way of learning how to ask questions and stay confident and get the information you need. And that's why we're going to do some role plays here today. And I like a lot of participation. So, okay. Albert, turn on your camera. Michael, uh, turn it uh, back on you. And uh, we'll start today. And everybody's coming in the building here. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, three things you need to succeed. You need strategies. You need to know different aspects. And if you're going to be in creative real estate, and it's called creative for a reason, because mm -hmm. anybody can write a check. If you have cash and credit, that's great. But a lot of people who are getting started in real estate or seasoned investors have limited resources. We don't have millions of dollars laying around, except for maybe Joseph. Um, no, just Helen. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, just Helen. Just Helen. Do not You're say. a smart man, you know. I married a woman who had much better credit and more money and a better career than me when we first got started. So I, I, I agree completely. Um, three things you need to succeed. You need strategies. If you're in real estate or whatever business you're in, you better know your industry. How can you negotiate a deal? Uh, the one great thing about this coming recession, or some people say we're in it already, um, and I, I might agree with that as the statistics are starting to come out. Um, you got you better have your strategies are you going to do subject to owner finance um are you going to do my favorite i've written several books on lease purchasing if you want to go to claudediamond.com um i have several books and packages just on the lease purchase strategy i'm a recovering attorney i also have a lot of contracts in my packages and they include with one-on-one -on -one mentoring so you can set up a plan um so you got to have the strategies the number one number two you better be good at marketing marketing has been very difficult for the last couple of seven or eight years. Uh, why? Because the demand is so high and the supply is so little. So it's been really tough. A lot of people have been doing scraping and mail lists and things like that. Um, it's not the most productive form of marketing that's out there. <coughs> I've always believed in attraction marketing. I'm finishing up a book right now on getting the prospects to call you. That's also on my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. Uh, good morning, Jessica. Hello. Where, where's, Je uh, where's Jessica? It's like saying, where's Waldo? Remember that <laughs> game? Huntsville today. Huntsville. Uh, how y'all doing? You got? I'd like some. How y'all doing? Can I have some cheese grits, please? <laughs> good food. Yep. Good food. And yeah. another thing you really need. So you need the strategies. Got to know what you're talking about. Got to think fast on your feet. You got to do some marketing. So you have people to speak to. Every day. The death of people in this business is inconsistency. You cannot do two, three phone calls every two, three weeks or two, three months. Don't get in this business if you're not going to run it like a business. That's the key here. Number three, you got to be superb in communication, in persuasion, in influence. You've got to learn how to talk to people. You cannot call them up 
This is where I get into trouble, Jessica and Joseph. This is where I get in big trouble. Reading a script is caca. It won't work. Hiring a VA is a waste of time of money and money. Having an auto dialer with a robocall, it's insulting. You don't want people to do it to you, yet you're paying people to do it to your customers. I think that's, and you can disagree with me here. This is very subjective. I run my business very small. I think big, but I'm very small. I treat people the way I want to be treated. I make personal calls. I negotiate right on the spot. I do what is biblical. Not. That's biblical, Claude. Say again? <laughs> That's biblical. You treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. <laughs> what's the, what's the thing from the Bible? Uh, uh um um oh gosh. There's Just, so many. Help me out somebody. <laughs> Claudia, what's the thing from the Bible? Treat people the way you want to be treated. Um Yeah, treat 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 others how you want to be treated, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's it, just, right there. Yeah, yeah. Moses did it. Do and tell us that as you'd have them do unto you. Moses yeah, said yeah, yeah. Exactly. Moses. Yes. And that. Exactly. The man with the stick. The man with the stick. Do unto others as others do unto you. Thank yes. you. That's a better way to put it. Edward, Edward Klasky, thanks for yes, showing man. us your thanks for showing us your ceiling there, Edward. Oh, look at that. A face. <laughs> oh my god. I'm having a little lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Where's that you. from? That's it. The book. Yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> we have a, a citation here. Good morning, Vic. Uh, <laughs> Edward, uh, Carrie Kennedy. All right, Carrie. We're going to, I'm going to put you, uh, Carrie and I had a really good discussion yesterday. Carrie got my blood pressure up uh, on a deal. You want to, do we want to share anything about that, Carrie? Because it'll be oh. a good role play. Not at the moment. <laughs> Not at the moment. Okay. We'll do a thing. Vic, who are you? Introduce yourself. I think you're one of Justin's uh, guys, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm one of the Justin's newer students. Hello. Claude. Okay. Tell me about yourself. Uh, uh, we just got started in real estate. Uh, we, we, we don't know much, but we're, we're trying every day. We're, 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 we're working hard. Okay. Working hard. It means every day. You're, are you, are you, uh, can you see my sign? Are you giving good phone? Are you speaking to just a handful of people every day, one-on-one? -on -one? Just Speaking. a little handful, yes. At least five care. a day. Vic, if you were one of my students and you said to me, Claude, I spoke to five people this week, Monday through Friday. I spoke to five people. I made five offers. I did five follow-ups with those five people. I would love you for it. And I would tell you, if that's the behavior you can do consistently, there's nothing to stop you from succeeding. Nothing. Awesome. That's that's great to hear. I, I, will, um, I will put it and I will guarantee You've got to talk to people. We've gotten to a point. I'm going to get on a soapbox. It'll be it'll be real short. I promise. I think we've gotten so automated, we forgot the human aspect, the human mathematical formulation of getting another person to say, "Hey, let's do this deal." Okay, and and maybe we lost that. Good morning, Christina. We Hello. Can't... Hello. How... You <laughs> are you one? Of, are you one of uh, Justin's posse? Yes. Um, I'm actually with Wick. With. Uh, she's, she's my partner. Uh, yeah. she, she's my partner. Yeah. Oh, you you guys can't share the same str stream? Is this a marital difficulty or, or what? <laughs> We're in the same room, but you're in the same room on separate screens. I love it. Yeah. It's a great country or what? Mm -hmm. I mean, really. Um, you got we've lost the we think we can text, we can email, we can delegate to people who don't have our skill sets or our motivation. We think we can delegate our business. There's such, I, I don't like to use bad language, but there's such BS about succeeding in business that you can automate everything. You can put it in your click funnel and everything. And that's wonderful if you're Elon Musk and you're building, a, you wanna build 100,000 electric cars a year. But most people I think are what we want to be kitchen table millionaires. Does anyone know what I mean by that? What does that mean? Like, rich like rel relationships through relationships, maybe, or sorry, through relationships. What's a kitchen table? Just think of yourself in the kitchen on a nice wooden table. We have a beautiful, I'm in San Diego, but in Colorado, we have this beautiful handmade wooden table. It's just a simple round table. I love taking my computer upstairs and working from it and drinking my wife's very good uh, French rose coffee, uh, you know, and from that one table with no employees and good Wi-Fi and good computer equipment, I can run a whole business. Mm. I can put mac and cheese on the table. Christina, you were gonna share. Oh, I was thinking I was thinking that something along more of the lines of um, conversational, how is your day type of. Yeah. What happens when we talk to somebody and they, they have a problem? Here's the big thing. 
This is this market is changing right now. We're getting into a low supply, high demand. We're coming out of that since 2009. We've had a great free ride, okay? But are things changing right now? We talked a great deal about this on my Monday group training. Things are changing right now. Can you guys, anybody, is anybody looking at the prices in the supermarket? Forget about the gas pump. Have you seen what's going on out there, right? What's going on, Vic? Uh, water used to be, um, you know, you can get those jugs. You can get them for like a dollar. You used to. Now they're like 130 something, 140. Yeah. I, lo I love this overpriced uh, French fuzzy water, okay? Mm. Uh, I, I think it was uh, a, a case was like $6.99. I think it's like $12, $13 now. When did this double? Wow. It's water from France. Who knows what it, what's in it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Albert, what do you think? Albert, with the universe behind you there. Hey, Claude, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you think about all this drivel I'm, I'm spouting out today? It's great stuff. Uh, stuff I'd hear on YouTube videos whenever I watch your, whenever I'm on your channel. Why? <laughs> why am I so? Why is my? Why is my vision purpose? Why is it so contrary? I'm not a contrarian. I'm really not. I'm a glasses half full. I'm an optimist. But why is my viewpoint so different from my 99% competition in so many aspects? Why? Why, why am I such a damn oddball? You're a funny oddball. I, I like to I like to laugh a lot. I like I think life is short. You should enjoy it. I think uh, the the person who said money isn't everything was 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 psychotic or something. Money's so important. Okay, you want to live like a good human being. You want to be philanthropic. You want to help your causes and make sure your kids go to good dental colleges or whatever. You got to have some. But life is easier. You can do the. You can make good decisions when money is not a factor in that decision making process. True or false. True. true. Ooh, it's kind of true. Ooh, opinion. Totally true. Oh my God, he's got opinions. This is crazy. Don't do it, Claude. <laughs> I think when you when you, and the thing about this bit, wonderful business we call real estate, it's changing now. The one change that we're seeing that we haven't seen for years. Who knows what it is? What's the big change now? It's a buyer's market. It's a buyer's market. What does that mean, Steve? Good answer. Interest rates going up. <laughs> That means that a lot of buyers had a little bit more control than the sellers were. They can basically kind of like set the tone, set their environment, set what they want for it. So it's a little bit going to be tougher negotiating. The buyers say, hey, this is what I want. If you want it, great. If you don't, go someplace else. <laughs> Are we seeing what's the, every guru at every seminar in the 80s and 90s? They always said, find the It's their mantra. I, somebody must have a tattoo on it by now. Find the motivated seller, right? Okay. Yeah. They've got it on one arm and SpongeBob on the other. Okay. And find the motivated seller. What is a motivated seller? Let's define that before we get into some role plays here. What is a motivated seller? Someone unmute and jump in. What is that? Someone, someone who probably has like a life transition. Something has to happen. They have to get rid of, they have a problem with their property. A problem with their, they oh, I like the money. He said one word. I love oh. it. What was that one word he said, Albert? That one word in that, in that answer from Michael. Problem. problem. Who, said, who said problem? Everybody, problem. problem. Do people have problems now? The owners of properties, the investors, are they starting? What did we hear? How many of you read these articles? There was a great article from Ani and Chantel on the Skype group yesterday. What do we start? And then I posted one from uh, Bruce Norris, who's a great statistician in California. Bruce is called at least three of the um, recessions, depressions, and things that we've had here on the on the left coast, okay? He, and basically, um, we're seeing um, <clears throat> foreclosures and evictions. Where are they going? Up. Up. All, all of a sudden, we're seeing that. Was it, did anyone have time? If somebody four years ago, and they were, had a four, and they couldn't make their payments, how fast could they sell their home? In a minute. Yeah. And then we had the pandemic and government interference, both state and federal interfered with a moratorium on evictions and on foreclosures. So now we're in a new place. This is the thing. Change is constant, isn't it? Yes. Now we're in a place where people are starting to have problems, as Michael said. Well, what kind of what kind of problems do you think people are having now in these a young couple, uh, they bought their first home for $750,000 in East Bumble, California, in the desert somewhere. Steve Zobro probably sold them the land. 
<laughs> no, it was West Bumble. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they, they're both husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, they're yeah. working. They both make 60 to 100,000 a year, young couple. They have uh, three chihuahuas uh, and they're and 65, 70% of their income is going to this, 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 their first home which is a big change for millennials and Gen Xers. They're paying a great, much greater portion of their total income than we ever paid in my generation. Okay, we paid about 35% of our total income was for our house, you know, and then it went up to 50. Now I'm reading 67% of mm -hmm. um, younger people of their income. That doesn't leave much after taxes and a couple, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, a couple trips to uh, Grubhub and stuff, uh, a couple deliveries to Grubhub, right? Right. It doesn't leave much. Plus when the couple is maybe, the husband has maybe 150 mile an hour drive to work, you got gas and all that stuff. It's like, we don't have the money, man. We're, we're how are we going to do this? I think, Cliff, I'm listening to you. What we, I think we need to really be, be empathetic. There are people going to have problems, but when we're empathetic toward their problems, we can make a lot of sales. Time we can for make a, a lot of okay. empathetic. I'm an invest. I'm an investor, and yes. I have the work. And I have the work. And I've been investing for years. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, 45 years old, um, and um, uh, I've been. I've turned over some properties very successfully. I know what I'm doing, and now I have the world's worst contractor on a property. Uh, I bought this property for a hundred thousand. It needs um, another hundred thousand in repairs, and at the height of the market, it was worth about three fifty. And I've had now I have the world's worst contractor who keeps delaying and delaying and delaying and my wife can't sleep at night. Um, so I'm putting it. So what? So I'm I don't know what to do. And Steve, you heard about my problems with this contractor. Right. Uh, right. Word of mouth. Hello, right. this is uh, Claude, the, the Claude, the investor. Hi, Claude. What's going on, man? How, how can I help you? Uh, well, um, yeah, I, I got this one property here. Um, uh, um, I'm still repairing it. It's, it's, you know, it's getting a lot of sweat equity. Uh, it was worth about 350, 375. Uh, it's probably worth. Uh, it still needs a lot of repairs and stuff. And I need to move out of it. I'll just be honest with you. It's draining me, man. So you need to move out of it. How soon do yeah. you need to move out of it? Well. Oh. My wife can't sleep at night and we're a little concerned about the market and everything like that. It's got a lot of equity in it. Um, the repairs, um, I've got a contractor in this, but- uh, so You say a lot of equity, help me to understand that. What do you mean a lot of equity? Help you know, it's, it's worth, it. Well, it's, it, I, I, I had at one time about 250 equity in the thing. Okay, okay. okay. Um, but, uh, and I still, I, I bought it for a hundred thousand. I'm sinking another hundred into it. Um, I'm figuring I can get about 350 for it. Mm -hmm. uh, if the market holds firm, but um, I'm I'm here in East Bumble, Florida, and mm -hmm. uh, the market's changing a little. I'd I'd like to sell it. Where do you want to move to? If you sell it, where do you want to go? Uh, to? It's an investment property. We we love these, we love Bumble, Florida, so we're staying here. Okay, so so is it okay? You want to talk about money? Can we talk about money a little bit as far as exactly what do you want for it? Uh, uh, like I said, I got about two hundred thousand into it, but it's still being. I, I just want to be upfront. Um, I got this contractor and he keeps telling me, he keeps moving the goalposts like I'm running with the ball. You know, Lucy and Charlie Brown, every time Charlie Brown goes to kick the ball, what does Lucy do? Oh. I thought I heard you said 350 though. Did you say something about 350? That's the one It's I worth I... right right now. It was up to almost 375, maybe 400 at the height of the market. I'd say right now, 350 is a fair price. I can substantiate that. How's your wife doing? She's probably freaking out. You're taking, a, you bought it for a hundred, you put a hundred into it. The contract's not getting stuff. How's your wife doing about all this? You ever worry, uh, you ever worry with a wonderful, uh, live with a wonderful woman who's wor who can't sleep at night because she's worried about bills and money coming in? Yeah, I'm with you, man. You know what? Do you, can you give me a number that you want for that property right now? What do you Let's want see, can, for? We, can we take a quick, uh, uh, yes. role plays go real long. So well, I know. On a, on a, Selling is about emotion. Right. Am I wearing, is my heart on my sleeve right now? Right, you want to go. That's why I'm trying to get what a, your number is. On a one through 10, what am I? I'd say about a 10. I'm a 10. What's the right. danger? What's the danger about a guy who's a 10? You can lose him quick. You can only go down. Can going down. <laughs> can go down, right? right? So right. you got to be careful here. You know, you got to, uh, Steve, what was that word you said earlier? That empathy. E word? Empathy. 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 Yeah. Give us a definition. Someone tell us what empathy means. It's a great word. 
It's not sympathy. It's empathy. What does that mean? You understand feel someone's pain. Yeah. You understand what they're thinking. You understand. You know what they're thinking because we you've been through it before, so you understand where they're at. So once right. you can understand that, you can. So close me here, Steve. Gotcha. Close me in sixty seconds. I, okay. under, I understand. I went right. through the same thing. I right. know how you're feeling. Your wife is upset. Sure. And imagine, and then do right, throw right, the right. imagine in with the story and close me yes, like that. Yes. Go yes. ahead. Imagine what it'd be like, Claude. You know, I know you put a hundred thousand into it. You got you you bought it for a hundred. You got a hundred into it. The contract is not getting stuff done. Your wife's kind of like Claude. Let's get this taken care of. Imagine what it'd be like saying closing this, getting rid of this property, putting some money in your pocket. Imagine it'd be like doing that right now. Imagine imagine if I could basically say, Claude, I can get you some money for this. What what would you think about that? I what, you know that's why we're talking, man. I'll be yeah. honest with you. I. If I got this property behind me and told my wife at dinner tonight, it's over and yeah. we recouped our invest, I, 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 you know, I'll just bottom line this. If I, you know, gotcha. uh, if I, if I can make a little bit of money still on this, cause I put in two years on this property. You know, I made a decision, Claude. I made a decision right now. This is what we're going to do. Tell, so oh, time it. out, time out. I got it. Right. That was so brilliant, Steve. Right. What was, right. what did Steve just say to me? I've made a decision. Made a decision. What does that mean? I have made it. He's the salesman. And he's, what is he doing right now to retain control and keep me in that emotional state? I have made a assertive. decision. He's being assertive. Is assertive a dirty word, Jessica? No. no Why? No. What did he do so brilliantly there? I have made a decision. Do you, somebody who's got he's a lot in of charge. Heart, yes. Yes. Someone who's got all their heart and soul, they're being honest. Have you had honest discussions with prospects? It's not always a, a battle of wits and stuff no. like that. Some people have so much pain that they just want a resolution. And Steve said, I'm going to be your doctor. I've made a decision. Sorry, Steve. I That was so good that you, you your timing was perfect there, man. So let me continue. I made a decision. We're going to do some business today. Suppose I was able to close within 10 days. Pay your cash get you $225,000, go through a title company. What would happen next? 225. Well, I paid a hundred for it. I put a hundred in, 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 in repairs that are still going on, by the way. I, I have the world's worst contractor involved in this property. Can you, I, I just want to be upfront with this. This guy says he's yeah. going to call me on Monday and he meant Monday in August. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, right. so with you. yeah. So you're going to mm -hmm. assume, uh, could you do a little, and, and I'm going to walk away, recoup my stuff with 25,000. Could you do a little bit better? What do you mean by, what do you mean by a little bit better? Can you uh, clarify you, that? Could, could you make it, um, could you make it 237.5? Hmm. 237.5. Two you did say 237.5, right? Yes, I did. Okay. And I did say 225. So we're like. $12,500 apart. I mean, I was at okay, one time, suppose, I thought suppose, I was going to make suppose, Okay, suppose I said yes. What would happen next? You got a deal, man. Okay, cool. No, I enjoy talking to you. And thank you very much. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for getting it done. Thank you for trusting me. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me, um, just from talking to you, I can sense that you're yes, yes. You know me, no. It's your person of your word. Why do I feel that way? Um, I'm old school, man. When I tell, when I shake hands on a deal or give someone my word, that's it. I'm, I'm just like that. Okay. So I'm not going to be getting a phone call tomorrow. Hey, Steve had a bad dream last night. My wife and I decided not to go with this 237.5. I won't be getting no. that phone call, will I? I would never good. do that. I would never do that to you. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what, um, suppose I was able to work up that number, the 237.5. Do you have an email address? Uh, yeah. Uh, Joe blow at gmail.com. Okay. Suppose I sent it to <laughs> Joe blow at gmail.com and I sent it to you at one o'clock today, your time, one o'clock, your time with, with, with today. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me a small favor <laughs> and get this back to me, get this back to me approved, approved by four 30 today, today. I, I can get it back to you by two. Three. Does it have to be notarized or anything? No, it'd just be a doc. I'll say, have you ever used DocuSign before? Uh, yeah, yeah. My wife is home, um, okay. so we can. So both. So we'll put both on. And your wife's name, your wife's name is Claudia, right? Uh, yeah, that... yeah. Oh, awesome. And you're Claudia. Right, so so that's, I... jo no, Joseph, Joe, uh, Joe, and Josephine Blow. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thank you. I really thank you for trusting me, Claude. I'm going to get that over to you by, you know, one o'clock your time. I thank you for getting it back by 430 my time because I like to start the process of opening up the escrow for you. Thank you very much for that. So look for it at one o'clock today. And uh, what happens after that? I, I, um, uh, do we uh, do, uh, do I have to call an attorney or what do we well, do? Here, next? Here's the key. If you don't get it back to me by 430. You thank you. Strong. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for Good asking question. that. Good question. Thanks for asking, Claude. Great question. That why is it important to you? Um, I, I just like to do things the right way. Okay, cool. So, so if I get you by four thirty, wonderful. Um, at four thirty one, it's over. So at four, are you gonna, you're going to be okay at four thirty to get this? You and Claudia done. All, all done. And when when do you think we're going to close by? You said what? I just say about ten days. I got ten ten days cash through wow. a title company. Oh man, you're a dream come true. Thank you. Give Steve uh, Zobro a round of applause. That was a damn good role play. <laughs> there was about four or five things that you can take away. This is why I love teaching role plays. Okay. Because if you listen to the words Steve used and Steve didn't just spout off words. He, there was a reason for that. Um, some of the questions he asked, I have made a decision. Um, uh, imagine for a moment, uh, if you were taking notes, there was a wealth of information in that role play. Cause I was a 10. And you're, what you're going to see in this market, you're going to see a lot of 10s start coming into this. As we get later into the year and into 2023, you're going you're gonna to start finding a lot of 8s, 9s, and 10s. And are you going to know how to deal with them? This is the, this is the beauty. Everybody's going to be going, oh, the recession, the stock market, the interest rates and everything. And you're going to have a lot of chicken littles. Remember that? Anybody remember that story? The sky is falling, you know, and you're going to have a lot of panic. Okay, out there. Let me mute there. Um, you're going to have, and if you come in there and say, I'm your doctor, I'm going to remove the pain. We're going to have this discussion. We're going to have it right now. And it's okay to say no to me, which is, and you can close people or at least start a dialogue in that first phone call. He closed me on a deal. How much is he going to make on that deal? <clears throat> it's a hundred grand. No, he was, he was going to oh, make, right. money. but yeah, he's so, got yeah. he's got one problem. Okay, he did, Steve. If there's only one criticism, what's Steve? What's Steve? Is Steve stepping into a world of doo doo right now with that contractor? Right. Who wants to play? Who wants to be the mean contractor? Come mm. on, come on, Carrie. You should know this by now. <laughs> Carrie, you want to be the contractor? <laughs> you got on. You're muted, buddy. Yep. Sure. Okay, Carrie, Steve, you want to continue your role? You just did a contract with me. We're in escrow. You have no issues with me, but Carrie is your contractor right now, and he's been he's been paid a lot of money. He he should have had the project done in in May, and he's been uh, procrastinating. There's a ten dollar word. It's probably fifteen with inflation. He's been procrastinating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, so what do you, Steve? What what in your mind? You're going to have to call him up, say, right. I took over the property, right. and uh, you're going to have to have a solution now. Mm -hmm. Are you going to fire him? Are you going to create incentives? Are you going to replace him and do it yourself? So let's see where this Because probably, probably what, what I would have done in our contract with you, I would have basically said, this is subject to a five-day inspection, or I would have put something in there with you to see what the contractor is. I, I, I want to know what your verbiage is, because if it's something where he can keep going, then I would probably cancel You're, the contract. The, the contractor is Peter Procrastinator. Okay. <laughs> okay. Peter said, Peter, has anyone met this guy who says right. I'll come on Monday and he met and he comes on 10 days later? Peter. Yep. Okay. Have we all met this person? Yeah. <laughs> yes. They drive us crazy, don't they? Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So uh Carrie's gonna play uh Peter Procrastinator. Okay. Okay. Ring ring. Hello. Hello. Hello, hey, uh, Carrie. Um, my name's Steve. Uh, how you doing? What's up, man? How's life treating you? Um, you know, it's rough, man. Just getting all these jobs done, and okay. you know, okay. it's just, it's just really hard getting okay. it done. Man. What do you What do you mean really Nothing hard? Getting, what, what, what do you What do you mean really hard getting it done? Help me to understand it. What does that mean? You know, just just the you know material shortages, uh -huh. uh, supply houses, you know, orders <laughs> being dropped. Sure. Um, okay. All kinds of stuff, you know, yeah. gas, gas prices, people showing up to work. I mean, it's uh, just it's just really hard. OK, I entered an agreement with Claude and, and Claudia Diamond uh, on, on the property that you're actually working on. 
uh, then I guess you have an agreement set up with them to finish their project. So is, is this correct? Can you tell me a little bit of what, what's going on with that agreement? Or is, is it already done or do you still have more work to do? Um, we're probably, uh, we're, we're into the fourth draw. Um, you know, we're still waiting on some stuff to get done, waiting on uh, some garage doors to come in. Um, just uh, my track hoe. Um, I've been trying to get this track hoe fixed and, and I haven't been able to get out there and finish the foundation. So we're, we're, we're probably four, four to six weeks out. So you say fourth draw. And from my understanding, they've already paid you $100,000 so far. How much more do we still have to pay you for to finish this project? Um, we're looking at probably about twenty five thousand left. Twenty five thousand dollars left, and then we could okay. d- d- uh, then we could get the CO. Okay, CO. Okay, gotcha. Okay, which means certificate of occupancy. Okay, um, so twenty five thousand left. Uh, suppose because um, I we're looking to close this in ten days, and we we want to get this thing done or get it pretty well wrapped up. Four to six weeks seems like a long time to get that done. You, you can't get it done quicker. Um, no, like I said, you know, between, uh, there's back order on, you know, the garage doors, um, trying to get, uh, get this part for this track hoe. Sure. Um, I've, you know, a couple of my yeah. guys, my, you know, my really good carpenters, uh, I've got them out to, uh, two other jobs and it's just, you know, four to six weeks is a minimum. It's really six to eight weeks. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, you know what? Um, I would like to work with you, and you seem like a great guy and a fantastic person. But I've got a problem. We just we can't go down that six to eight weeks because we want to kind of like buy this thing, get it ready, and put it back on the market. Um, so you're saying there's about twenty five thousand dollars owed still to you yet on this property to get it finished? Yeah. Yep. Suppose I was able to say, you know, and that's what you have in the contract: twenty five thousand dollars more is owed. Is that correct? That's what you signed with Claude and Claudia, correct? Yeah. So, so it was basically, it was $125,000 agreement. So suppose I said, you know what, Carrie, I mean, I like what you're doing. You do a great job, but you know what? I can't wait that long. Suppose I was able to just pay you uh, $10,000 and we'll just, I'll, I'll pay the 10, but then I want to use my own people to finish the job. Uh, are you, are you able to do something like that? So I'm just, I'll give you 10,000, you know, but I want to make sure you get off the job. Are you okay? If I suggest that to you, what would you say next to me? You, you sound like a really nice guy uh, looking, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. looking, 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 looking at my costs and so on. Um, I could probably let it go for uh, 17, five. Mm. Probably. probably. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. Probably not. I mean, that's, mm. you said 17, five. Mm. Yes. Um, you said 17, five. Okay. And I said 10. Yep. Can, can we split that difference? If I send you over a contract today to give you a contract for 13,000 saying that you're off the job for 13,000, we'll sign it. You'll have no more responsibility with the property that I'm buying in about 10 days. Are you okay, are you okay with that? Well, um, if you could go to 15,5, you got a deal. <laughs> Remember he's in breach of contract right now. Yes. He has oh, not yeah. performed on a timely basis on a signed contract. Well, I mean, if if you look at the time, if you look at the time, you know, I got I got overhead, I got payroll, I got insurance, I got licensing fees. <laughs> okay, Kara, do you do you have a good attorney? Do you have a good attorney that you? Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good because I do, because I do. So I so, love it. So here's my here's my here's my suggestion. We'll offer you ten thousand dollars. If you can sign something today, otherwise I'm going to contact X, Y, Z today, or I'm going to contact my attorney and he'll, he'll contact you and then he'll let, I'll let him deal with you. So do you want, and I'd like to do work with you, Carrie. You seem like a great guy, fantastic person. It looks like the work so far has been pretty well done, even though you're a little slow on what you're doing, you do a good job. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, anyways, are you, are you okay with that, Carrie? 10,000. That's it. No, I mean, that's, okay. I got more in it than that. I got, I got overhead, I got payroll, I got insurance, That's fine. Uh, you know, but, you're, maintenance. but, but you, do you know, do you know your breach of contract? You are aware that you're a breach of contract, correct? You're aware of that. Well, you know, once again, we got weather delays up here. Um, okay. you know, we got all sorts of things, you know, we had inspections getting, you know, getting the county to come out and, you know, and inspections. 
So, I, I mean, I've been battling things too. And, and I feel, I feel based on my quality of work and uh, my experience in the area that I should be compensated for my time. Was that in the agreement stating that um, you can have all these excuses, wish you washed your excuses while you couldn't? Well, we, 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 we did have, um, if you look at uh, paragraph 26, uh, schedule E, that there would be a buyout clause in case something were to happen. Let's, um, let's time let's out let's, now. Let's, let's, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap, let's wrap it up. up. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, Carrie, tell you what. Let's just, <laughs> Carrie, let's, all right, Carrie, you want. I, I was not aware of that, Carrie. I've not seen that part of it. Tell you what I'll do. I, again, I, I made Role play magic. The magic of role plays. You can I, invent any bullshit right, you right, want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you seem like a really nice guy, too. You made an initial <laughs> offer of uh, 13.5. Um, yeah. I'd be willing to go 13.5, and we can call, call it a day. You can go my way, and I'll go my way. Kara, sounds that? great. Terrific. Great. What's your email address? Can I send you something, like, in the next 10 minutes through DocuSign? And you can sign it and get it back to me. Are you okay with that? Sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's cool. do it. Good role play, guys. That was uh, that was an yeah. unusual. That was a yes. different kind of role play. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. What the the one thing I really like? I love the conclusion. When you have somebody who lies to you, manipulates you, keeps moving the football and the goalposts, should you continue to negotiate and try to bring them back to being reasonable, or should you fire them, get rid of them as fast as possible? Fire them. Why? It might be a lawsuit. Might you know? You might have to pay him money yeah. for work he didn't do and everything. Is that is that really worth it, Albert? Is that what you should do? No. No. Not worth it. Oh, it's not worth it. Not worth what? Keeping him? Yep. All the stress. There's a there's a there's a reason why we're in this business so yeah. that we could have less stress. Um, well, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> if you're if you're looking for a business that has less stress, real estate is probably <laughs> not the place to go to. <laughs> OK, um, there's a reason it's called tenants and turlets. OK, uh, and I learned that the hard way when Claudia and I first started in real estate together and we really built up what we had a uh, young family in Southern California just moved here and we were running all over the place trying to, you know, we were begging from Peter to pay Paul. We Somebody who had a rent check, but they didn't mail it. I'd run down to their place and pick up the check and, and the deposit it. And then the check bounced. And then I had to go back again. And, you know, this is the nature of this business. For, uh, the one thing I, I'm critical about gurus is they always make it sound too easy, too good to be true. Okay. It takes a lot of management experience. Did you hear Steve? What was the one thing Steve was doing so well about was he being specific, like in the contract? If I send this a docu sign to you today, can you get it back to me by 1.30 today? Yeah. Did you guys hear that? And Kerry did a great job too. Was Kerry doing the most wishy-washy, maybe, probably, should, could? Uh, you know, the sky <laughs> is falling. My wife doesn't understand me. Every excuse you've ever heard, right? Because he's excited. Because he's experienced it in his business, probably. He's yeah. getting that from his contractors. Those are real <laughs> issues for contractors yeah. right now, too, though. It, you know, those are real issues for contractors, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Well, I, I get them. Uh, I, I'm still doing my house. And I mean, this guy, my guy, I mean, he gives me every uh, excuse, you know, like what I was saying about the insurance and the insurance and the payroll and the overhead and the tractor payments and the van payments I, I mean i've i've heard them all i mean it's you know and then um he originally we had these two garage doors it was supposed to be finished in january and so my wife kept on and, and on about the garage doors we were supposed to be done january 15th he ordered them in february wow. so, so you know and then uh she finally got a hold of the guy he ordered the wrong garage doors and so we got to you know we had to go back to the queue for eight to ten more weeks so i mean it's it's was that a supply chain issue or yes well no the guy that's doing the work he ordered the wrong garage door and then he figured out that he ordered the wrong garage door so we had to go back in the queue for eight to ten more weeks to get the right one because it's you know the the boat you know the boat wasn't coming or something 
Oh, man. Yeah. After a while, uh, it takes all the joy, all the fun out of this business. I mean, we love when we do a deal, we get a check uh, by uh, the sweat off our own brow, our own ingenuity and hard work. And that's that's wonderful. But that only comes, you know, if you'll. And that's why I love talking about the mistake. I, I think it's more valuable to learn people's mistakes than hear about, oh, I just I'm so brilliant. I made all this money. You know, I want to hear what you did wrong and what you learned from it. That's that's the whole point of mentoring and coaching, in my opinion. Okay. And my contractor, I'll I'll use a fifty cent word. He's giving me a plethora mm. of excuses about why he can't finish my job. So I'm a, a, ple- a plethora of BS. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 and so absolutely. But, if you let me ask you a loaded question: If you had to do it all over again, what would you do differently? <clears throat> I would have spent about five thousand dollars fixing, you know, you know, getting it ready, and then I would have ho- wholesaled it, made ten, and moved on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would have wholesaled it and moved on because where where I am in our in our particular area, there's not a deep enough pool of contractors and tradesmen, skilled skilled tradespeople, to get the job done because they're so overloaded because they didn't expect because it's a resort area where we are and they're just not set up you know to do the amount of work you know people coming up from florida you know arizona california you know wanting to live in the mountains and you know and plus with covid you know people wanted to get away from the cities they still do and and so they come to the mountains yeah they're coming to the mountains the suburbs the desert communities the southwest is booming If uh, Phoenix, um, Scottsdale, Southern California, even uh, San Diego, I heard, is is really doing very well right now. People are getting a little tired of San Francisco and L.A. and they're they're coming down south. People uh, there's a lot of uh, Americans, expatriates moving to Mexico, believe it or not. Um, So we're seeing changes in the marketplace. We're going to see a lot more motivated people. We're going to see people who uh, can't afford their payments. They bought a house way above their budget. Yeah. Um, what's the one thing we talked about this on Monday? What do companies do when they're not making the profits that they were making a couple of years ago? What's the first thing they do? Lay off. Cut back. Yeah, lay off. Cut. Cut. Fire, fire people. We're going to start. Watch the unemployment statistics. That is a real key indicator about the health of the economy. Because if big companies, you know, start laying off people, or firing people. That's the easiest way a board of directors says, hey, you know, we're not selling as much. Uh, let's get rid of the guy who cleans the toilets or something like that. Do we really need that person? Do we need to spend uh, uh, $300 million on advertising anymore? Mm-hmm. And then you said, and that just drips down, you know, they call it a drip economy. It drips down. So if General Motors isn't spending money on TV ads and TV stations are not making as much money, and it just keeps going. And the, the reporters are laid off or, or the guy who drives the truck for the reporters or the person who fetches the coffee is laid off. OK, it, this is the what this is what happens in a in an 18 month recession. Yeah. The good thing for us on that all doom and gloom is we're going to get motivated. So, so if someone's behind, um, if we have someone who bought a home, a young couple and they bought a home and all of a sudden uh, the husband or the wife got laid off. The income was cut in half and unemployment is not making up the difference. How would you negotiate with that person? Let's do a role. Who wants to do a role play? Who didn't have a shot here? Come on. I'll volunteer. Okay. Thank you, Vic. I'm, I'll be the, I'm four months behind in my payments. Uh, my wife just got laid off on her job and um, I'm a used toothbrush salesman and business is not so good right now. <laughs> Is your is your house uh, listed or am I just? Uh, it said to pre- the market is the listings are increasing, um, the valuations are starting to creep downward, and we're four months behind. And there's no moratorium on foreclosures. Please, Lord, make it so. Um, if they start doing moratoriums on evictions and foreclosures, I don't know how bad this thing is going to really. That scares me. I just yeah. I really hope they don't do the same thing they did in the pandemic. That that's cons- and I'm in the southern Soviet so- socialist uh, state of Southern California here, so who knows uh, on this? So Vic, go ahead. Make I'm in pain. I'm in, you're gonna have to bring out my pain. 
Okay. Yes. Hello. This and I had a sign outside. Uh, uh, for sale. Uh, for sale by owner. Or you saw, or maybe you saw online the foreclosure, the NOD notice of default in the legal okay. section. Okay. Cool. Hello. Hi, Claude. Um, this, this isn't about real estate, is it? Uh, who are you? Oh, you're I just. Those, you are you are you another one of those attorneys from the bank? Oh no, I'm not one of those attorneys. I just uh, um, I think I just like walked by your house or something. Um, but I did. I was I was I was able to get your phone number. Uh, is this uh, is this a bad time to talk? Maybe. Yes, it really is. Bye bye. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Vic. I got. You're not one of my regulars, so I had to teach you. So what did I just teach you, Vic? Uh, don't use uh, bad time to talk. Right. Why? Give me the why. Um, because it's always a bad time to talk, probably. Yes. <laughs> yes. You may be the 10th guy who called me today and you've got me on the phone. When should when should you? You've got right this now. is your moment, man. Don't, don't give me an excuse. to. <laughs> okay. This is a good time. Can we talk now? Uh, can I have a minute of your time? No, just go for it. Okay, I sorry, he, to, sorry think, to jump I, all over you. I, I think he did. I think he asked a good question in the beginning. So I think he asked that. So his first question was good. Oh yeah, your, your pattern interrupt. You came yeah. out of left field. I was yeah. a little off balance. I love pattern interrupts. Somebody, yeah. tell, somebody tell Vic what a pattern interrupt is. It's one of our little guts uh, psychological moves there what you do you you ask someone a statement or a question just totally get them out of their pattern so they go who is this guy what are you talking yeah. about yeah. do you want to stay in your house yeah how can i help you or, yeah. or you, you, you want to interrupt their pattern think of their pattern interrupt it with about three or four seconds and in those three or four seconds you want to gain their attention yeah with their attention you can start going without their intention you're done what happens, Vic, when we all get that phone call at dinner time? Hi, Vic. How are you? Just reaching out to you tonight. Can I have a minute of your time to tell you about aluminum siding and all the advantages for your family? We're having a special, but the price goes up on Friday. Mm -hmm. What's going to go? What's going through your mind, Vic? Uh, I'll give this guy like 10 seconds before I hang up. Oh, you're going to give me 10 seconds? You're, you're, you are nice. <laughs> okay, so we don't want to sound like that. So good. Well, okay, let's just jump in the conversation here. I'm four months behind in my payments. Um, and uh, we're starting, uh, my wife's been laid off and we're stressing out. And you you like this, you know this neighborhood and you want to turn this into maybe a lease purchase or so. Are you familiar with lease purchasing or something like that? Yeah. Familiar. Okay, what's, what's my biggest pain right now? You're 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 behind on your payments. You can't make right. your payments. What else? Go deep. What am I worried about? You're you're probably worrying about like um, your your wife will be really upset with you. She's probably yelling at you like three or four times a day. What are we gonna do? They're gonna. Why are you yelling us. at me? Never you ne she never yells at me. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, is but, role, this is role play. We can do anything we want. It's <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay. What else? What's the pain? of being behind in payments, you're getting notices uh, on a thing and everything. There's maybe some equity in it. You bought it and you maybe made some equity in it. And, uh, but you know, they're gonna take back your home with the equity and ever, it's gonna be a financial disaster. Is that a lot of pain? Yeah. Who should, who should inflict that pain? You're the Marquis de Sade. You're an inflictor of pain. Mm -hmm. Should you make, if I'm a six or a seven, little naive maybe i'm very young and everything can how do you, are you going to bring me up to an eight nine or ten yeah go for it hey claude you know um i i, I i'm hearing you out you know uh I, I totally understand your situation but what if we could uh, help you help you out somehow and maybe you could ha spend another 30 days in the beach you know wouldn't wouldn't that be great the beach yeah, you, you, you said you live in uh, Southern California. I live in Southern California, too. You're right by the beach is the greatest place. You know, California is really, really great for that kind of thing. Oh, so wait. Um, so, um, yeah, I'd love. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking for an answer or a solution. Uh, you mean I can keep my house and and stay by the beach? And um, um, is that what you want to be able to do? We can definitely uh, help well, you I'll out. I'll be that. honest with you. I'm four payments behind, and the fifth payment is due on uh, uh, June 30th tomorrow. Okay. 
Okay, so it, uh, it's due by tomorrow. Oof, that's kind of tough. Um, so, uh, tell you what, uh, what's the conversation you're having with your wife every day? It's not. It's not a happy one. You know, it's not that scene where Snow White is in the wood in the woods with the birds flying around and everything, and Bambi and all that. It ain't like that. <laughs> uh, so you're you're you're, t- you're talking to the witch and uh, and <gasps> she's about to give you an. Did you just call my wife a witch? She just called you a <laughs> Just called you. You Whoa. never know who's listening. You Whoa. never know. I'm not with the poo on my shirt. How can I be a witch? Oh, for heaven's sake! <laughs> <laughs> you never know That's what's going to happen in a role play. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just call my wife a witch? That's not, that's very rude. No, okay. yeah, she, my, 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 my wife gets that way too. When, uh, when, oh, when, oh. when I step on her toes, wait, wait, wait. Um, I don't know your relationship, but I think you and Christina know each other. Uh, she's my partner. She's not my wife. Oh, okay. You're okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I try to go with the flow. You know, uh, we yeah. do, you know, we do record this by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, maybe you want to make me an all lease purchase offer. Say, Claude, suppose we paid up your back payments, protected your credit, protected your equity. I would like to rent your house for one to five years. Uh, we will take uh, or negotiate. You could negotiate the payments. So then maybe you could rent it for more money, turn it into an Airbnb. Maybe you could assign, if you got a good enough deal and there's enough equity, maybe you could sell the contract to somebody else. Maybe you could do what we call a sandwich lease. You're paying the owner two thousand a month, but you can sublet it for twenty five hundred. You give the owner two thousand down and pay off his back payments, but you can get ten thousand down in option money. So that this is um, I'm throwing a lot at you because this is a strategic type of negotiation um, on the deal. So you got to get me to get out of the property, right? And, what, and you said, do I like the beach and everything like that? Do were you thinking of keeping me in the property? No, I was thinking of um, how much he would need to be able to rent out another place or for him to move out because he's probably going to still stay in the area somewhere. And how much would I need to give him to be able to to find somewhere else to live? Because he only has five days, right? We, we got to we gotta make a decision or how many days he has left, right? I don't, I don't know. We didn't discuss. We didn't say when the hammer would come down. Banks are going to be very slow and uh, you know, the foreclosures are going to pick up, but the courts have been backed up since the pandemic. So I don't think foreclosures are going to move uh, very fast. Anybody have any information on on the speed of foreclosures right now in their marketplace? Well, Arizona is 90 days. So once you do the notice of trustee sale, it's 90 days. So okay. I've been calling people on the phone. I says, do you want to stay in the home or, or are you going to move out? So I've been trying to hit them with those questions to see, do they want to stay or are they going to move out? And I got to find out where they're at. Yeah. But it's 90 days in Arizona. So hey. once that's, once that's, yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Thank you. Vic, make me an offer on the house. Uh, don't let me manipulate you with maybes, probably's. Call me in two weeks. Make me an offer and use scarcity right now. 60 seconds. Close me or make me an offer. So so what if we did like a one to five year kind of like a let's do a like a lease purchase. Let's say we we give you a little bit of money down. How much would you need to like move on, move and get out of there? Well, um, that, that my house has about 150,000 equity in it, but I'm 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 four I'm five payments behind, two thousand a month, ten thousand dollars behind, and uh, okay. we just can't cut it anymore. Okay, so ten thousand. It's rent to own. Um, um, will that protect our equity and save my credit and pay up my back payments? Uh, I, I'm not sure if I understand. Yeah, yeah, that, that's uh, something we can definitely solve for you. Um, and you know what? Imagine if we were we were able to that was good to, to to come in and make those payments. Your credit goes up, and you're you're able to find another place. You know, with the m- amount of monthly payments we're able to get you. Do you know maybe somewhere you you could stay that that you could rent out for about two thousand two thousand a month? Well, maybe. Um, so, uh, wow, where do we go from here? What should I do next? Um, uh, you know what? I this, sounds definitely... re- this sounds really good. Uh, so you mean you're going to pay up my back payments and take care of my future payments and and uh, and all and stuff like that? I'm not. I've never done anything like this before. Well, if we if we were able to do that for you, what would you say to me next? I I, I think we if I learn once I learn more, I think we could do a deal. 
You said if, um, can, can, can you clarify if? Well, do, are you, is there a contract or something like that? Yeah, I can definitely send you an agreement if we were able to. So I can probably say about 1.30, I could, you know, can we, can, can, can I hear back from you by 1.30? Yes or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm, I really appreciate this, Mr. Vic. Yeah, great. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely send you something and I'll, I'll be able to make sure that, you know, you can tell your wife that someone's serious, that they're able to do something today and you won't be able, uh, you won't, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Someone will be able to make your payments, find you a great place. To good role play. Life. Give Vic a round there. That was good, man. I put him in the hot seat there. You did. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, that was good. Make <laughs> offers and follow up. I love that. Because we're going to have another meeting. By the way, when you set up a meeting, Vic, try to get it on video. If you have an iPhone, make it FaceTime or use Zoom. Get Try to get video in, involved in it. What does that say? What's the message you send to people when you're not scared to show your face? Transparency. Confident, your confidence. Yeah, confidence, transparency. Okay. You're serious. You're serious. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're ready to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, you're ready. You're ready to move forward on that thing. <clears throat> so I was that was good. Um, the only thing in that role play, we would need more information, more qualification. Right. What's the decision making process and everything else like that. And uh, but a lease purchase is my one of my favorite strategies in recessionary times. It's I get the control without the investment and the liability. I can pick up some really good properties that I can either wholesale arbitrage to somebody else, or I can manage and set them up as a sandwich lease or a straight rental, or even an Airbnb if it's zoned for it. So Claude, exactly. in that situation, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, man. I was gonna ask a question, but. When you're negotiating with someone, they do have quite a bit of equity in the house. Uh, how do you try and work that out when they're, you know, five payments behind? Um, are you uh, going to try and keep that equity for yourself? Are you going to offer them some of that to do a deal? Or I mean, obviously, they're, they're are you as great greedy? And... It depends. Are you as greedy as I am, Edward? Edward, I am. I, I, I just want to know how you go about that. And... Um, Edward, on a one through ten, you know, I really appreciate your situation. I'm going to give you some solutions to get you out of this thing. You have about a hundred thousand equity in the property. What do you will? What's the best purchase price you can give me today, so that I can go to my investment group? And we can make you a, an offer. What What are you willing to walk away with uh, right uh, now? If I could walk away with fifty thousand, I'd be happy. Um, that might be pro well. We have to put up all the money. We're going to assume the more. Uh, we're going to uh, put a new mortgage on this. We're going to pay up your ten thousand in back payments. Um, I was thinking twenty five. You want fifty? Any chance we could split thirty seven fifty? Uh, you get out. You walk away with from this deal. Would you be? Can yeah, you live with that? I think 40 would be fair. Yeah, but uh, I was thinking really 225. Uh, 25. Um, so that's my offer. I'm going to meet you in the middle. Can we move forward or is it over? Yeah, we need to get out of this. Let's do it. You're, good. I, you're a gentleman. Thank you, sir. Boom. Thank you. To go, we've, have we, you know, they don't teach this at Harvard Business School. How mm. important is the art and science of, what is negotiation? Give me a definition. What is negotiation? What is this? It's got to be a win-win for both parties. If both parties are winning, yeah. you, you should my, win. My, a win -win. My, my, mentor, wow. my mentor used to say, I believe in win-win as long as I win first. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That works. About compromise. I just remembered that. Thank you, Steve. Um, right. Give and take. So we either, two things we want. When we're negotiating with someone, we either want leverage where we're controlling the property with very little money invested, utilizing a, sub, a, a subject to or rent to own or something like that. You know, if I can control a property by renting it a month to month, that's beautiful leverage for me. So instead of going to a bank or paying you 37.5 or something like that, if I'm looking to make a real a killing on the deal and you're willing to give up equity because you're so motivated, and um, you're, you're willing to, I usually bring up the real estate agent fees and stuff like and the closing costs and things like that. If you have the money, cash is king is the best strategy in real estate. When you have the cash and the credit and you can, and someone just wants to get out, they don't want to do a creative real estate deal. They just want to check. Okay. How much money did I save by saying split? I know, uh, what's his name? Voss wrote, never split the difference. Everybody read, read that book. Yeah. Oh, what's his first name? I know his last name is Voss, V-O-S-S. -S. Robert, Robert, Chris, Robert, Chris. Robert, 
Christmas. it Robert Voss? And he said, never split the difference. He was an uh, FBI <laughs> hostage negotiator and everything. I oh, split yeah. the difference all the time yeah. uh, because I'm looking for what happens when you make an offer and they're the deer in the headlights and they're at least a seven or an eight. You could... You can get closure in that one phone yeah. call, right? Right. Yeah. What, what's the thing we do wrong all the time in negotiation? Back and forth. Okay, call me in a few days. I got to talk to this person. Send me your offer. I'll look it over. Uh, give me a call uh, next week or something. Does that, do we make any money with that kind of negotiation? Once we get a yes, we have to go really to get to the agreement, get it to them today. Today was the time. You yeah. want them to sign it because once you have that, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. I got one role play I, I wrote down here. I actually prepare, believe it or not. Christopher Voss. Thank you, Helen and Joseph. Okay. Um, I do use split the difference sometimes, or sometimes I will negotiate for Edward. Uh, can you hold the equity on the property? Say you had a property free and clear. One of my favorite strategies is tell you what, I'll give you full price, Edward. Uh, according to the market right now, uh, and I'll give you uh, six percent interest-only payments for three years, and then we'll exercise our option if we choose to. Now, for a real small payment, can I make passive income renting out that property? So, if I'm just paying you interest only on your equity, um, and the property rents for a lot more, we've seen rents go sky high right now. Uh, can we make money on a property just renting it out but and controlling it? Maybe it'll go down in value three years from now. Let's say it loses $100,000. Do we have to buy it if we have an option? No. 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 One quick role play, a fun role play. Um, you're going to have to use a lot of visualization here. I am Elon Musk, and I'm uh, I'm ready to do SpaceX, the, the next step in space exploration. And I'm really getting... And I'm really getting tired of the uh, state of, of, of governor. What's his name? New scum. Uh, I, I'm really getting tired of our governor and our politics in California. And someone told me that Texas is a good place to move to. Do we have any Texans in the room? The te Christina, sell me, make me move to Texas. I mean, I'm Elon. Hit your button. Yeah, Christina, I'm, I'm looking. I, I want to start this whole uh, trillion dollar space exploration uh, thing here. We're going to Mars and everything. And uh, mm. I'm, a, I'm a little sick of the bureaucracy in California. What can you offer me? Well, we definitely have more land. So I'm not familiar with the bureaucracy in, in, in California, but um, I hear your taxes are ridiculous. Oh, let me tell you about the taxes here. They they tax they would tax oxygen if they could. Uh, I mean, what's Ooh. your what's your gas cost in Texas right now? Uh, maybe like we're at four, probably three dollars. I I paid seven I paid seven twenty five at the stop and go gas station the other day. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, your pocket must be hurting, and and if you're trying to take off to Mars, that's going to cost you a, a pretty penny right there. Oh yeah, and my employees. I, I'm trying to hire employees like everyone else. Nobody can afford to live to live in. Um, oh God, give me a town north of uh, L.A. Uh, um, Pasadena. Nobody can afford to live in Pasadena anymore. Dang. Well, we definitely have the space and the capacity here in Texas. Uh, you'll probably feel more. Oh, were you looking for like a big town, suburban? <clears throat> well, were you we're going to be for... launching these giant rockets, and we need to be somewhere near the ocean. So if we make a boo boo or something, we don't. Uh, we only kill a couple fish and not you. Okay. Know. <laughs> so you're looking more in, in the the Corpus Christi area. You know, there's there's a lot of um, a lot a lot of beautiful places that you can go ahead and do that. Use and the I, word use the word imagine and use a lot of like you're selling me a juicy hamburger now. Make it real. Imagine you're here. You're by the beach, land people. You can get a great employees who can afford. You know, sell sell. Make it romantic now. Okay. You're doing great. Uh, you're doing super. So imagine if you're actually by Corpus Christi, because that's the, the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you'd be having great employees there. You'd be having a stable place where you can run your business. And I mean, if you actually want to go to Mexico too, you'd be just a passport away. Um, I know it's, it's something that, that would probably be a little bit more fitting Imagine if you're, you're experimenting for the, the spaceships. 
actually do go up in in all that time frame because it, it will take a little bit of time. Um, I'm just sick of the paperwork and bureaucracy. I got to fill out forms and I got to bribe people. And uh, I'm just so tired of this California bureaucracy. Uh, nobody can make a decision. And uh uh, I, I'm I'm ready to move to a place that that can see the future and wants uh, wants a company that's going to hire a hundred thousand people. Can you can you accommodate me? Corporate Christie seems like the perfect place for you. Uh, it's definitely in need of more employment and definitely in need of your business. Tell me, you've made a decision. I, I think I've made a decision. Um, I, I think you would be happy here in in Corpus Christi, where you get your ocean and your business, and your employees, and everyone's happy. And, and, and Chris, give Christine a round of applause there. That was a great summarization of close. I, I threw a left field role play at you right there. Do you think that some part of that conversation, it really happened to Elon Musk when he was talking to Texas before he set up space, at SpaceX, isn't it? Do you, yeah. think that, do you think some of the things Christina was doing, yeah. and she did it very well, do you think those were topics of conversation? Yeah, mm -hmm. taxes, gas, all that stuff. You bet. What do we be like? Yes. What yeah. do we know about billionaires? Do they have small egos or monstrous egos? Mm -hmm. Monstrous. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and what's that word? And what's that one word Steve likes to use all the time? The E word. Empathetic. Empathetic. Emp mm -hmm. Empathy. If we do that, I would. Just, I would just want to leave a million dollar tip for the new people there. If you guys can get your real estate license. I think that's going to be helping you a lot of people out because a lot of stuff, go to your state, get a real estate license because there's a lot of things you can do with that real estate license. So some of you new people on the call, I would strongly recommend that. And then find a broker who's real estate investor friendly. So when you find deals, you can get it through the system. Put this real is, estate is, agents to work. That's a really good tip, by the way. Multiply your efforts by communicating to other people already. In, what's going to happen to real estate agents over the next six months, by the way? Who remembers 2008? What happened to all those? Real, every Everybody and their mother-in-law was a real estate agent. What's going to happen to all those agents over the next six months? They're going to leave the business. They're going to leave. Yeah, they're going to go back to flipping burgers or whatever, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Did we learn something today, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. 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 Give yourselves a round. Good session. This is Role Play Wednesday. My name is Claude Diamond. A lot more information on my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. You guys, nobody deserves success more than you good people. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Claude. Take Thank care, you. everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Moved fa it went fast. Wasn't that a fast uh, hour? Yes, it was. <laughs> nobody it's yawned. Time. I love it. Good day, everybody. Take a, have a good Bye. day, everyone. Thanks for joining. Great to be here. It is good to be here. And for my fans on uh, YouTube who are watching this right now, uh, just wanted to let you know that's this is the way I love to teach. Uh, role playing with people, bringing out the needs, greets, the problems, and dealing direct, almost like a doctor with a patient. And if you learn a system, you can hear the phone ringing. My phone rings all day long because I do attraction marketing and I approach people like I'm not trying to manipulate them or sell them or put them in a lot of pressure. I'm saying, what's your need? What's your problem? Why don't you just give it to a realtor? And then they can come back to me and say, this is what I need to happen. And I'll tell them and I will set up the guts is three set three steps and I will set up an agenda. And from that agenda, I will qualify and then I will make offers. I will close in one phone call, sometimes two, never three. I believe in quick closing. If someone has enough pain or need, you can close them, get commitment or get out in one phone call. Did you ever learn? Did you ever see, how do you feel about that, Albert? It's great. <laughs> Did you, have you read my book, The uh, Gut Sales Method? Uh, no, I haven't gotten it. You should. Can I send you a free copy or you don't want yeah, that'd be. That sounds good. Sounds good. Um, my email is mentor at mac.com or mentor at me, me.com, M-E-N-T-O-R. Send me a little email. I'll send you a free copy of my book right now. Next um, next mi couple of minutes or so. Mentor at mac.com. Dot com. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or right. mentor at me, M-E. You can do it either way. And everything. Right. You got sales is the million dollar skill. Do you, do you hear these role plays? Yeah, yeah. 
how, <laughs> you know, I mean, we had a lot of fun and some of it, it's a little ridiculous, but how much did you hear the moves that some of my students were making? Couple. Yeah. This is how you sound. You've got to act and sound like a millionaire. You've got to, you've got to people. What do you want people to say about Albert when they get off the phone? It's a great guy, very trusting and uh, very honest and transparent. That's Definitely it. want to do business with him today or any yeah. other day. And if, if you've got, if people say that about you, but you have competitors who've got park benches with ads and shopping carriages and TV commercials, and they got 20 virtual assistants, but you get to one person and you touch them and they say that stuff about you. What did you just do to your competition? Knock them out of the you park. Not they didn't have a chance because one Albert is better than a, dis than a distant corporation, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a a absolutely. Do you have a question? Quick question before I go. I saw you hung online here for us. Uh, no, I'm just trying to gain the confidence to make my first phone call to get my first property. Cause uh, I'm also doing lease options as well. Good. You're, ac you're actually my mentor's mentor. Oh, okay. Who do you work with Justin or um, uh, Mike Carbonari? Mike Carbonari. You know, I've known Mike for, oh my God, I think it's at least 18 to 20 years, something like that. He's a good guy you're working yeah. with. The <laughs> Naked Investor. I remember yeah. when he was coming up with that name, I said, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. You, you know, lease purchasing is my favorite strategy. I've written several books about that, mm -hmm. about lease purchasing, but it only works if you're having these kind of conversations like we did today, yeah. if you just call somebody up, hi, just reaching out. Can I have a minute of your time? Are you busy? I wanted to talk to you about lease purchasing and putting strangers in your house. <laughs> What's going to happen if you sound like that? They get nervous and distrustful i think that's the word you're, gonna, you're just gonna get hang-ups all day what oh, happens hang when up. you get hang-ups all day or take me off your list and stop calling me what happens when you hear too much of that confidence just drops and <laughs> boohoo tissues as well. get out the boohoo tissues man <laughs> i need i can't you know i can't i can't work under negative environment where people don't like me or i feel like i'm bothering them i need i need environments where I am finding someone with a need, a greed, a problem. And I, they see me as a, a problem solver. Mm. That million dollar skill sets here. You know, it's a, you, you can't automate a hug from your mother when you came home from school and someone beat you up that day in fourth grade. You can't automate stuff like that. There's no robot who's going to make you feel better than mom giving you a hug and uh, fixing your scraped knees and giving you some milk and cookies. You can't automate everything. Can you? I guess not. No. Okay. <laughs> I, it's serious. <laughs> and I think, I think we're in a real people business, but we think that we can automate, um, you know, or scale everything. The, we have to, we have to factor in the, the human effect, the human factor. Okay. I'm yeah. a recovering attorney, but my real, what I really love is human behavior, psychology. How, as we use that word empathy a lot. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? How do I get in there? If you can get yeah. inside their head. Blank I'm check. Dangerous. What's that? It's a blank check, right? It's a blank check. I've been doing this 32 years. I'm debt-free, mortgage-free. I own really great real estate. Money comes in my business every day. It's on, and I'm not trying to sound like a jerk here because I do one good thing. You have a good phone. Yeah. And they don't teach this. Nobody's teaching this. Yeah. Even if you don't have all the answers, all the solutions, can you? if you have good conversations, how do you feel after three, four, five good conversations at the end of the day I feel you great feel? you feel great you have a great day you had a great day you had a great day oh well listen i'll tomorrow will be better and everything but if you're getting shit uh, <laughs> i try not to use too much bad language i'm a new york transplant that's fine. New Yorker. <laughs> if, you know if you get if you're getting you know the old expression don't pee on my back and tell me it's raining um if, if you're getting dumped on and rejected and people just <sighs> nasty at you all day long can you do this i can't 
No. It's... You gotta you gotta find a better solution. I have to go, sir. It's nice to meet you. All right. Have a good one. Mr. Hernandez, anything from you, sir, before I go? No? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and all my friends on YouTube, and Max and Albert and Marvin and everybody else, thanks for joining me. Um, give good phone. Uh, learn the skills of the gut sales method. And look at that guitar back there. Play. Let us end with a song. Oh, you want a song? <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> Claude Diamond, the one car closer, <laughs> one car closer, Claude Diamond. I like this song. One car closer, yeah, one car closer, mm -hmm. one car closer, Claude Diamond. I ran that for you, your birthday uh, a few weeks back and uh. That was great, man. That spot, the spontaneity is is great. <laughs> you just pull yeah. that. You just pull that song out of the air, out of the universe, didn't you? Yeah, it was an improvisation uh, a few weeks back. Yeah. I mean, What'd you think about today's uh, group training? It was fantastic. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, all star role player right there. Uh, all the points that he hit, uh, just great to see it put into action. You know, the the Gus method. I mean, when I, it's night and day uh, making phone calls with callers that are sellers and using this method. For me, I've noticed it's night and day uh, receptiveness. From Steve is very successful. He lives in California. I've been working with him, I think, for three, four years now. Um, there's a new YouTube I just put up the other day on a deal Steve just did. He bought a piece of land. It looks like it's out in the desert somewhere yeah. for, for like pennies. And I think he sold, he just sold one lot or something for 160,000. A lot of opportunity. <laughs> so watch that YouTube video. Do you have a final question before I go here? If, I mean, I think uh, we've been covering the topic has mainly been, uh, you know, the, the coming changes. And uh, what to expect and what kind of what to uh, how to hedge a little bit. And I think it's been a hot topic lately. And uh, I think we covered on um, my some of my curiosities. Yeah. You know, Dylan's uh, you, you're, you're a musician, you know, Bob Dylan, of course. Mm -hmm. And the times they are changing. These times are changing right now. Mm -hmm. And if you can recognize these changes and study the, the strategies historically, from Perfect. other investors and see what what do, what do people do you know we're not going to have where these properties are just going to keep going up in value and the rent's going and it, they're going to level off and, and they're going to dip um, mm. i think we have a very serious recession coming for the next 18 months and i think there's these times are changing but i think there's also great opportunities Correct. Uh, right now um, mm. especially especially you know in in certain high price markets right now albert where do you live I'm in Norwalk, California, so okay. I'm just like okay. 15, 20 minutes away from LA. Okay, um, yeah, I'm in <laughs> San Diego, um, yeah. and um, you know the, I mean, you know, you know the old joke. What does a hundred thousand dollars buy you to, in California? You know, cardboard the cardboard box I'm behind Walmart. Walmart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a, a yeah, fair absolutely. assessment? <laughs> absolutely, that is a fair assessment. Um, so I think if we're, we're going to find a lot of more motivated sellers, we're going to be able to make a lot of lease purchase offers, which you couldn't do. You could still do them, but not. But the, the thing is, everybody loves cash. And when you have a property that yeah. you can get all cash and then they're, you know, it's like an auction at your front lawn there. And people are paying you 50, $100,000, a half a million dollars more than you, you were asking. Mm. Uh, who wants to do a lease purchase? Truth be told, right? Correct. Does anyone want to do creative financing when they can get all cash and get it quick? But now we're starting to see that behind, people are behind in payments and the layoffs and everything else we talked about. So the market's going to change. So you can, if you, if you know where to look, mm -hmm. okay, you find people who are behind in their payments, behind in their rent um yeah, investors who had i did that contractor did you like that contractor role play today absolutely can you imagine yeah. if you were a, 
a property, you spent a lot of money to buy it, you spent another 100000 to fix it up, you have the world's worst contractor, even <laughs> though you, you can make $150,000, $200,000, but the guy's driving you nuts. Do you think you can... You think somebody would be willing to give it up for thirty-seven thousand instead of two hundred thousand profit? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when the times are, like I said, changing and especially fast right now. The numbers are fluctuating super quick. So you want to move quick. You got to move quick. DQ, baby, do it quick. Mm -hmm. Make make those make those offers um, out there. Any other questions for you fellas before I go? Whoops. I was gonna call. Here's my Diamond. phone. This is Diamond. I have to go, guys. We'll talk soon. Right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. You will.